The world of Barnyard is something that completely passed me by, despite the fact that I was the perfect age for the film when it came out back in mid-2006. I was 10 years old and obsessed with cartoons at the time, but for some reason Barnyard was never really on my radar. Maybe it's because two years earlier Disney released Home on the Range, which had a similar premise at a glance, and was a movie that I hated. Whatever the reason, the film passed me by and was slammed by critics who described it as unimaginative and unfunny. Yet it clearly found an audience as it would make $116.5 million worldwide against a budget of $51 million, making it the fourth highest grossing Nickelodeon movie at the time of release. That success spawned a spin-off series titled Back at the Barnyard, which ran for two seasons before getting canned, something I was excited to see as a kid because I hated that show. It did manage to receive a tie-in game on the DS before its death though. In more recent years, we've seen the Shrekification of the Barnyard franchise, where seemingly everything about it has been memed to death. And as part of that Shrekification, some spotlight has been shined on the two tie-in games that the Barnyard film received. I'm Brandon, and I'll be your captain for this journey through Nickelodeon video game history. Released on August 1, 2006, three days before the film hit theaters, Barnyard was released for the GameCube, PS2, and GBA. Later that year, it would also receive a Wii version to coincide with the November launch of that console in North America. Just imagine, while most people were playing Wii Sports, some poor sap was probably playing Barnyard on their brand new Wii. All of the home console versions were developed by Blue Tongue Entertainment. Most recently, we saw them develop Nicktoons Unite, and a little bit later on in 2006, they'd put out the sequel, Battle for Volcano Island. In 2007, they once again returned to the Nicktoons franchise for Attack of the Toybots, and they also put out the forgotten El Tigre game, which brought an end to their Nickelodeon collaborations. From what we know, the development of Barnyard on home consoles seems to have been pretty turbulent. The first glimpse of the game shown to press was quite different to what you can actually go and play today. Unseen64 has a great article about this that I really recommend you go check out. To paraphrase it, they basically came to the conclusion that Barnyard was developed based on the bones of a cancelled and unannounced title, which appeared to have some pretty intricate NPC and AI mechanics. These ideas were playable in the beta versions of this game, but by the time it was released, they'd been majorly scaled back. As for the GBA version, that was developed by Halfbrick. Their debut game as a studio was Rocket Power Beach Bandits on the GBA, with Barnyard being their follow-up game they partnered with Nick for. In between those two titles, they worked on a couple of GBA ports of Tie the Tasmanian Tiger. <laughs> Eventually, they'd work pretty heavily on the Avatar series in the handheld space, and they'd take a crack at Nicktoons with Attack of the Toybots on GBA. The reviews for this version were far from kind though, slumping to a 5.6 average score on Metacritic. The home console versions, while not anything amazing, did a little bit better, falling between a 6.2 and a 6.6, .6, depending on the version you look at. It actually received some decent scores from both IGN and GameSpot, so maybe there's hope for Barnyard to win me over. Let's pop these games in and head on down to the farm to see what it's all about. Are you sick of having your identity stolen while traveling through hyperspace? Well, say goodbye to that thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Aura. Identity theft is actually the fastest growing crime in America, with a new victim every 14 seconds. That's roughly 86 new victims during the span of an average video on my channel. But with Aura, staying protected from these attacks is super easy. Aura combines identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software into one easy to use app. A scary reality for a lot of people is that they will fall victim to some sort of identity theft these days, unless they're properly protected. I know that I've come ridiculously close multiple times in the past year. Most people don't even realize they've fallen victim to identity theft until the damage has already been done. 
Thankfully, Aura monitors the dark web for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers, and sends alerts right to your phone so you can stay one step ahead. Aura also gives you near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, like if somebody was to try and take out a loan or credit card in your name. And then with Aura's VPN, you can actively protect yourself while browsing by keeping your history and personal information safely encrypted. Protect yourself and your family from identity theft by going to aura.com slash cartoon review, which is linked down in the description. If you sign up with that link, you'll receive a two week free trial. Try it out and see for yourself just how many times Aura finds yours or your family members personal info on the dark web. I want to thank Aura once again for sponsoring today's video. Now that my identity is safe, let's head to the farm. I hope you're hungry for fetch quests and mini games. Barnyard on the GBA is somehow both enthralling and utterly boring. You'll constantly be going back and forth between being bored out of your mind and then absolutely flabbergasted at the next ridiculous thing you're witnessing on screen. Interestingly, Barnyard on the GBA sort of follows the plot of the movie, but from a different perspective. You arrive at the titular Barnyard as the new cow on the block. You get to choose which cow you want to be, so obviously I chose this absolute unit. And then you start a sort of orientation on the farm. Because there isn't exactly a lot going on with the plot of the film, the developers had to do everything they could to pad this game out, so it wasn't 30 minutes long. The first kind of gameplay you experience here is what I've dubbed the exploration gameplay. It's a kind of way of describing what is basically fetch quests. As you walk around the farm, you'll chat to the residents and initiate missions, which you're given barnyard bucks for completing. A lot of these missions are actually time sensitive, which plays into the game's day-night cycle. Once it hits night, you actually have the option of going to bed to advance time to the next day. A pretty handy option so you're not stuck just killing time until your missions become available again. Or rather, it would be handy if the time in this game didn't tick by ridiculously fast. Actually advancing time is pretty irrelevant. And it's made even more irrelevant when you discover that the game forces you to sleep once it hits 2am. I thought the cows in this film were supposed to be all about partying. But the best part of the game forcing you to sleep is that hitting the 2am limit makes your character just drop to the ground and sleep wherever you are. I know they're wild animals and this actually makes sense, but seeing your character do this will never not be hilarious. Your cow gets a whole three hours of sleep and is transported back to the barn when this happens, which can actually be a bit of a pain in the ass, depending on where you were and what you were doing. As you explore the farm, you'll notice plenty of fruit you can pick up. These always help with either your health, stamina so you can run for longer, or your milk. Yes, your milk. The devs really took the idea of being a cow to heart, because you can squirt milk in barnyard, if you think that's weird, just wait until I get to the home console version. Halfbrick was able to pad out Barnyard's bare bones plot quite well, largely due to the fact that they included a weirdly impressive world here. Just take a look at how enormous this world map is. Extra impressive is the game exclusive location, Dankweed Pond. <laughs> Dankweed actually works as the description of a pond, but there's no way that this wasn't a deliberately included adult joke, especially when you factor in the absolute insanity that's still to come with the home console version. Eventually, you're given a tiny bike to ride around the farm on and make exploration a little less tedious. Do for me my favorite trick where you ride the little bike at- Unfortunately, the bike is super slippery to control that any relief that it would have provided from having to not run everywhere is negated. If you're not on your bike, you'll get attacked by raccoons, which you can repel by squirting your milk all over them. But yeah, this game is mostly fetch quests. Speak to somebody, they ask you to go to somebody else or bring them a thing, and you just do that over and over again. Occasionally, they'll change things up by initiating these fetch quests via a phone that you have for some reason. Nico, it's Roman. Let's go bowling. But at the end of the day, you're still mainly just fetching and questing. 
Your one break away from fetch quests is when the devs ask you to play mini games. Mini game ideas here range from the very basic, like whack a mole or darts, 180. to the pretty interesting and kind of unique. The marbles and fence fixing mini games introduced ideas that felt fresh and like I hadn't played them 100 times before over the course of Nickelodeon video game history. Once you've unlocked these mini games, you can play them whenever you want by going to the appropriate spot in the world. This is where you can grind up barnyard bucks because hitting the target score in each game will shower you with cash. But what can you actually do with this money? Well, this is where the game sort of turns into a kind of Animal Crossing inspired experience. If you head to the Gopher Underground, which looks shockingly similar to Pokemon Diamond and Pearl's Underground, you can buy various upgrades for the barn's basement. It's something I would have got a kick out of as a kid back in 2006, but as an adult with a job and an actual apartment that I could literally decorate myself, it's slightly less appealing. In a similar fashion, you'll also occasionally get gold stars, which you can take to Miles to upgrade one of three stats. There are speed, strength, and utter stats for you to choose from. I just dumped all of my upgrade points into increasing how long I could run for, which allowed me to move around quickly and not have to worry about using the slippery bike. And yeah, you basically just do all of this on repeat without much of any story happening. Until Ben gets murdered out of nowhere. So I've never seen Barnyard before, and when the game plays a cutscene of Ben being mauled to death, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. I can't overstate how much of a dark turn this is for this game. It's a bright and happy fetch quest simulator with absolutely no story, until bam, you witness a murder cutscene. It is so, so tonally jarring that I can't help admire it. A lot of kids were forced to grow up the day they witnessed this. Unfortunately, outside of Ben dying, this game isn't all that interesting. It's really not even a bad game or anything. It's got plenty of negatives, but it doesn't do anything so poorly that I can be super harsh on it. Instead, its biggest sin is that it's just boring. I think a lot of the problems stem from Half Brick being clearly directed to follow the story of the film, but there is so little to follow that they had to come up with a bunch of ideas to pat it out. This is why you end up sitting through constant fetch quests that have no narrative purpose. You're literally just doing menial tasks for no reason other than to extend the time that the game lasts for. When you have to sit through what feels like hours of irrelevant running back and forth in between actual story moments, you start to question why you're even bothering with this version of the game. Thankfully, the home console version cannot be described as boring, for better or for worse. One word, squirting. Barnyard for home consoles has got to be one of the most bizarre games I have ever played. It's actually stunningly similar to the GBA version, but on a much larger scale. With that increased power, the devs also decided to increase the horniness of this game considerably. So the narrative setup here is basically identical. You've arrived on the farm as a new cow. There's a cow farm. You're gonna find cows outside. And then you experience the events of the film. This means you once again get to make your own self-insert cow OC. But this time around, they have hilarious names for the type of cow you're choosing like American, or Holstein, or Beefmaster. You better believe that I chose to be the Beefmaster. Once you've got your cow selected, you jump into the actual game, and it's truly impressive just how similar the gameplay loops are. I'm not entirely sure why, but it feels like when THQ utilizes Australian-based studios for their handheld and home console versions, it feels like they mirror each other in such a satisfying way. With the mission-based, open-world gameplay carried onto this version, Barnyard actually feels a little like it was inspired by GTA. It's like GTA for kids, and only slightly less sexual. We've once again got a day-night cycle, with certain missions only being available depending on the time of day. And yes, you can rest to fast-forward time. 
And as far as I'm aware, this version doesn't force you to sleep. Although to be fair, the amount of missions available to you at night are quite slim. So I usually just did a single mission and then I went to sleep. The vibes are also immaculate when this game turns to night. I've always been a sucker for cool night settings, particularly in animated stuff, and Barnyard does it so well here. Just soak in that farm atmosphere. One of the worst things this game brings across from the GBA is that there's no real purpose behind most things that you're doing. The narrative is arguably even less present here than it was on the GBA because this is a significantly longer game. It'll take you around 10 hours to complete, which is 6 or 7 times longer than the film it's based on, which already isn't exactly plot heavy. You're just doing strings of unrelated missions for no actual purpose, and it makes everything ultimately feel meaningless and pointless. Until Ben's out of nowhere death pops up again. Ben fought those coyotes off like a strong man, defending others, but it took every last bit of his strength. That night, we lost Ben. Even being prepared for it this time around, it was still so jarring. It feels so out of place in this game. 99% of the time you're running around this goofy farm, doing silly tasks for wacky animals, buying illegal goods from gophers under the cover of darkness, and then bam, Ben's dropped dead. Uncle Ben? Uncle Ben? After like 5 seconds of mourning, it goes back to being a jolly goofy game where you're tossing chickens like you were the inspiration for Angry Birds. Ah well, rest in peace Ben, you truly were a good cow. Again, just like the GBA version, missions fall into one of two categories, dull fetch quest or minigame. I think the standout minigame here is Mud Jumpers because it really captures that Mario Party spirit. Basically, you have four characters standing on individual platforms with a spinning beam that's going around. If you get hit enough times, you'll be knocked off and eliminated. You've got two options here. You can jump over the beam like a coward, or you can kick the beam which reverses its direction and increases the speed. It's a genuinely fun game and I wish the rest of the mini games were more in line with this. The chicken game where you fly through rings like it's Superman 64 is okay, the bike races are decent enough, and the mailman dancing game is okay too, but they never really grab you in the same way Mud Jumpers does. The mini game where you steal and race a car is kinda cool too purely because of the absurdity and the shock that the car handles surprisingly well. But then the absolute worst game has to be golf, purely because of how ridiculously long these sections are. You're forced to play 9 holes of what is a pretty dull mini golf course. The rest of the uninteresting mini games at least had the courtesy to be short. Because of the open world nature, you've also got a slight exploration element going on here, as well as some side tasks to occupy your time. You'll collect food just like in the GBA game, but instead of buffing your stats, you can use them for recipes. Money is here too, earned mostly via doing well in the minigames and breaking stuff. And you will break a lot of stuff. So many things are smashable here, I was almost expecting Link to come rolling in and take over. Money is mostly irrelevant to the main missions, however there is a side mission to really deck out the barn for parties at night. You can buy things like pool tables, which are actually playable, and the whole goal is to make the barn so cool that they declare you king of parties or whatever. And to top it all off, you've once again got access to a bike to speed up your exploration of the world, only this time it's so much more fun. You can do the world's highest bunny hop here, and the devs have deliberately placed a bunch of jumps around the world for you to do sick tricks off of. This all results in you being able to do some truly insane things with the bike, like launching yourself a million feet into the air or crashing straight into the pond. Other citizens of the farm seemed less enthusiastic about the bike though. What, you want some of this? Now, I have to address the elephant in the room. Or more accurately, the male cow that for some reason has an udder in the room. 
For a game based on a kids film about partying farm animals, this has a lot of adult references. At first I thought I was reading too much into an innocent kids game, but the more it happened the more obvious it became that the devs were doing this for a bit of a laugh. For starters, the game is obsessed with using the term squirting. Shooting milk is one of the main actions you can perform in this game, and the devs decided to refer to that action as squirting. One of the most common minigames you take part in is literally called sharp squirting, and much of the dialogue introducing these games feels so dirty. Squirting contest! Let's see who can squirt the farthest! At one point I stumbled into the barn and I found these empty milk cans, which I discovered you could squirt your milk into. You can then turn this milk into cream with a gigantic you've got cream message being splashed across the screen. And there is something so incredibly sus about the messages the NPCs send you. It starts out relatively innocent. It's nearly sundown, see you tomorrow morning? But then they slowly ramp up. I want to see you. Okay, that sounds a little creepy. I want to see you tonight in the barnyard. Am I really being hit on in a game based on barnyard? I'm gonna be in the barnyard tonight. Let's hook up. Yep, the devs knew exactly what they were doing. All of this combines to make the game feel so weirdly dirty. But even with all of these bizarre sexual references, there's still nothing as horrifying as this decrepit dog. Ugh. Somebody please put this poor thing out of its misery. Speaking of the visual elements, Barnyard actually looks pretty good. The game's map isn't overly large, but there are enough visually distinct areas to make exploring a fun time, and all of the characters look really nice. Where the game really lets itself down is the voice acting. It is present, but as far as I can tell, almost all of the lines were ripped straight from the film. This means voice acting is mostly relegated to dull and generic one-liners. It would have been tough to get full voice acting for this game considering how dialogue heavy it is, but that extra little touch would have given Barnyard so much more life. Receiving incoming transmission. I wish I could recommend that you play Barnyard for the right reasons. There are some real positives here. The ambience is really nice, there are some interesting gameplay mechanics, and just seeing a game inspired by GTA but made for kids is fascinating. But a lot like the GBA game, this massively overstays its welcome. There's no narrative pushing you forward, and just doing the same mini games or fetch quests over and over for 10 hours is not fun. I probably would have loved this game as a kid back in 2006, but being a lot older now it just doesn't have a compelling enough gameplay loop. Even the weird sexual innuendo isn't a reason to play the game. Just google barnyard game memes and you'll probably find all of the best bits in under 5 minutes. It's certainly not a bad game and I could definitely see a version of this game that was in development for longer and perhaps leverage the Back at the Barnyard series being a real hit. And I think the reason why this game is as good as it is, is entirely down to the team that worked on it. During my research, I came across a former Blue Tongue dev on Reddit, who stated that the team that worked on Barnyard went on to make both De Blob games. This was the only Nick game that this internal team worked on, with the other Nick titles being handled by a second team. Next time I'm going to be breaking all the rules and covering a Disney game. Disney Dreamlight Valley has just released and seems like a crazy hybrid between Disney and Animal Crossing. Just covering Nickelodeon games week after week can cause me to burn out every now and then, so going forward I'm going to start covering new release Disney games when I can. Eventually once I complete Nickelodeon video game history I'd like to be a little bit more flexible with what games I cover, rather than sticking to a single franchise. Hopefully you guys don't mind me jumping into Disney for a week. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And to make sure you don't miss that video or any of my upcoming reviews, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And to stay up to date with everything that's happening with the channel, jump over to Twitter and give me a follow. <laughs>